I just turn it over to our first group, the Above the Violence group. Thank you. Video clips, news articles, and statistics are unfortunately not fiction. The Piner Valley, along with countless cities and towns throughout the Commonwealth and the country, are facing problems when it comes to crime, and more specifically, violent crime. I often hear people saying, what can I do? I'm only one individual. Well, over the course of the next 15 minutes, you will hear what nine individuals did when they came together as one group and partnered with an organization on the ground in Holyoke, truly making a difference. These nine individuals came together and made up the group Above the Violence, emerging leaders across the Pioneer Valley and consisting of... <laughs> Joe Blakey, People's Group! <laughs> Nicole Contoy, Springfield Housing Authority. <laughs> Catherine Gerardin, Clark Schools for Hearing and Speech. Victor Rodriguez, Hamden Bank. <laughs> Lynn Cage, WGBY. <laughs> Kristen Adams, Florence Savings Bank. <laughs> Debbie Kenyon, City of Springfield. My counterpart, Rachel Romano, Veritas Preparatory Charter School. And myself, Brady Chicola, People's Bay. So our team, Above the Violence, took on the topic of youth violence. So how does a group of leaders from across the valley coming together with their own ideas and backgrounds, strengths and weaknesses, form and tackle this task at hand? Well, that's what we will tell you. You can imagine that working with a topic as vague as address youth violence, that there are many different interpretations on the definition of violence, and specifically, you know, what type of violence we're we going to target. Well, each of us took our backgrounds, personal experiences, upbringing, and perceptions of the Piner Valley, and weaved that into our interpretation on the specific type of violence to target. Now, in our group meetings, we certainly experienced what leadership Piner Valley taught us as the four stages of group development. Forming, storming, norming, and performing. At first, we came together as one happy-go-lucky group, with each <laughs> member coming to the table with ideas, looking to take on responsibilities to help us accomplish our goals. Individuals within our group initially went out and met with several anti-violence organizations throughout the Piner Valley to determine really which community partner we were going to work with. They came back with violent statistics of the community and the neighborhoods that those organizations worked, and more specifically about the leaders of those organizations and kind of their dedication to the task at hand. So 
So the next phase, and as other teams will likely share with you throughout this afternoon, is always the most fun, and that's the storming phase. So this is where individuals within our group came together at a table to share their own ideas and thoughts about how we might tackle this big issue of youth violence. Um, so the group had to then decide which specific path we would take. So we had many great ideas put on the table. Some of those ideas include putting on an informational yet fun anti-violence event for youth, creating a mentoring program for a local middle school, creating an anti-violence resource kit for teachers to use in their classrooms, uh, or producing a YouTube video with anti-violence messaging that could go viral. Um, but while there were so many great ideas, we had, to, we had to decide on one, and together with our partner organization, we um, agreed that we would create a video that would help to promote a local organization that works with youth to curb youth violence, and that this video would serve as a fundraising tool for them, so that they could in turn sponsor more fun, but supervised and safe events for youth in our community. And to make this work sustainable beyond our time with Leadership Pioneer Valley, we also wanted to provide them with some resources and support through an introductory fundraising manual that would help them to implement this work and build capacity within their organization to keep it going. Now, during the norming stage, we came together. <laughs> during the norming stage, we came together to have one goal and a mutual plan for the team. Many had to give up their own ideas and agree with others in order to make the team function. We each took our responsibility and moved forward. Now, making a difference in the community, that is something we kept bringing up in every one of our meetings. We really wanted to walk away from this experience knowing that we truly made a difference, even if that meant doing something on a smaller scale in one community versus spreading ourselves throughout the Pioneer Valley. Now, as the group came together, we were motivated and knowledgeable and moved right into the performing stage. To ensure proper efficiency, we broke off into three subgroups based on our background and our knowledge base. Those three being the video production, video content, and the creation of the introductory fundraising manual. So at this point in the process, our group is feeling really good. We think we're on track. Um, but before I talk about how we continue to develop our final product, I want to tell you how we came upon the organization, the community organization that we decided to work with. Um, the Holyoke Youth Task Force, and more specifically, the Holyoke Knights Initiative. So as we mentioned, different members within our group went out and, and connected with various organizations that were addressing this issue of youth violence. Um, they met with people throughout those organizations and got a real sense of what was happening there from the leadership level, um, throughout the organization, the kind of challenges they faced, the work that they've done, and we're planning to do in the future. Um, and we also thought a lot about the challenges we would face in partnering with any of these organizations. So. Over the course of a few weeks, we vetted these different organizations and decided that we wanted to partner with the Holyoke Youth Task Force. Yay! So one challenge in making this decision was that the Holyoke Youth Task Force focuses only on Holyoke. And one of the you know um, great things about the Pioneer Val about the Leadership Pioneer Valley program is that it's 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 aiming to bridge to build you know pathways and unify all three counties. But ultimately, our group kept returning to the fact that we really wanted to make a difference and we all felt that this was the best organization for us to do that with. So what is the Holyoke Youth Task Force? They are a coalition of youth serving nonprofit agencies, city and state representatives, and community volunteers interested in creating positive opportunities for a healthier community for Holyoke's youth. Now the best part of the Holyoke Youth Task Force is that the part that makes them so successful is that it's compiled of youth. So rather than getting a bunch of old people in a room to try to plan some events for the youth of polio, they have kind of the youth fund it or you know, come up with the ideas of the specific parties. And to that end, the Holyoke Youth Task Force has introduced this initiative called Holyoke Nights. And that's who our relationship truly was with. Now, the idea of Holyoke Nights is quite simple. In Holyoke and in many cities and towns across the Commonwealth, they have these house parties. And these house, house parties are not the house parties that you and I went to. This is where they have a cover charge to get in, they have DJs, they're used for gang recruitment, they have the illegal consumption and sale of alcohol, I know none of you went to those types of parties. But, and the problem is that these homeowners don't even have kids that attend these events, they use it as a form of business, so they're just trying to make money. 
So the curve of this, we have this Holyoke Knights, this, this great group which provides a safe, free, and accessible way for the youth in the community to participate in this fun, safe environment. The only problem is there are 365 days in a year, hopefully you all know that. Currently the Holyoke Knights happens four times a year. So that leaves 361 more days for the youth of Holyoke to engage in things they shouldn't be engaged in. So when we met Rebecca Masters, the coordinator of the Holyoke Youth Task Force, and Amy Epstein, who leads the Holyoke Knights Initiative, we saw a passion and a fire that you don't see every day. And their goal is to increase the number of these events that they can offer. But they're limited in terms of funding and resources. So they're having a lot of trouble achieving that goal. They look to us to come up with some funding uh, to produce more events and to hire someone to organize the youth. Uh, we brought that back to the group, and so we started to think about how that jived with our vision and our idea. And it was, it was a challenging um, topic for us because many of us either work for nonprofits and do fundraising ourselves, or sit on nonprofit boards and, as a part of that work, do fundraising for those organizations. So we didn't think that it was best for us or, more, or most sustainable for, for the Holyoke Youth Task Force if we went out and raised the money, but we all agreed that we would like to be able to provide them with the resources and develop their, their capacity to go ahead and, and raise money for their own organization. So um, we realized that this partnership might not be as easy as we originally thought and that we would need to work closely with Rebecca and Amy to make sure that we shared a vision and that we could build some synergy for this project. So we decided it would be best to name a liaison, someone from our group, that could be a main contact between the Holyoke Youth Task Force, Rebecca and Amy, and our group. And so that person used a lot of what they learned through the Leadership Pioneer Valley um, days, challenge days, um, and they certainly inspired a shared vision, encouraged the heart, and enabled others to act. No, although we did make progress, there was one critical issue that we were, one, we were unable to resolve and that was being able to come to one of their events and shoot the youth. And we completely understood where they were coming from. Here they are trying to create this great safe environment and we'd be bringing a video production team to kind of videotape them and it might make some of the youth uncomfortable which was the complete opposite of what they wanted. They wanted the youth to be there very comfortable. So that was something that we unfortunately had to you know, disagree on. So you'll see in the video which will be coming up shortly that the event itself doesn't really have any youth there, and you're thinking, wow, this is unfortunate, you know, not many youth are actually going to the events that they're putting on, which is completely not true. They don't have like 50 people come to their events, they have hundreds and hundreds of people come to their event. Why? Well, again, remember I said earlier that it's not old people putting it together, it's the youth coming up with the ideas. So I don't know about you, but I wouldn't mind going to a black light party or a glow in the dark capture the flag. Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. So, I guess it all comes down to this. Nine month process of leadership, Pioneer Valley, what did we learn? Well, I can tell you what we did not learn. We did not learn how to compile nine months worth of lessons learned into a 15 minute presentation. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in all honesty, we, we, did, we learned a lot. We learned more than we can share with you today. We learned that leadership is not always about being the most vocal. That disagreements are not fights, but rather an opportunity to explore new ideas. We learned that we're all creative, even myself. We learned that identifying clear roles and responsibilities and time frames to an action is critical to success. We learned that each of us, with our different styles, have strengths and weaknesses that we're now more aware of, and how that really affects the group. We learned that the Pioneer Valley is an amazing place that has so much to offer, we just go beyond our comfort circle. And lastly, and most importantly, we learned that you're, we're gonna, you all will rate our presentation based off of 55% off of racialized body language, 38% by our tone, and only 7% on our words. So the 2,000 words verbalized in this presentation, I'd like for you to remember these nine. Above the violence did a really, really good job. <laughs> able to come together and to produce a final product that we're all very proud of. Uh, the video that you will see in just a moment with an accompanying introductory fundraising guide. We are grateful to Alan Bloomgarten of Mount Leo College who also helped us to develop a description and the opportunity for a non-paid fellowship that can work with the Holyoke Knights to implement some of this work. Um, so creating the video was a great start but to make it sustainable we wanted to give them the support and the resources so they could implement it. So. Um, Without further ado, here's our video. I think the Lord made this 
changing life for the better. It's really led by the youth and developed by the youth and inspired by the youth. We would rather have them in hold of nights where we can socialize them than outside house parties. We dance, we have games, we eat, we sit, we talk, we have a lot of fun. I think one of the nights is a really good thing for the youth. In Holyoke, um, folks are actually opening up their homes, adults, with or without kids, um, to sell tickets, to have youth come in. They have alcohol, they have music, they have dancing. So these are kind of like mini clubs inside someone's home. House parties are dangerous, there's no supervision, um, and violence happens. Um, where I live, I actually had a young man shot outside my house at a house party. Um, so. We need Holyoke Nights and you know we want to expand it and make it bigger and better and I think if there are more Holyoke Nights and more safe places and more safe things for kids to do and youth to do in the evenings, we won't have those fatalities that are just ridiculous and don't need to happen. So basically what we were doing was kind of creating this anti-house party, this place to go where kids can have fun, do stuff, it's really cool and actually not drink and see that that's possible. There's no risk factors in the, in the equation. We're taking out the alcohol, we're taking out the violence. What I like best is really the effect it has on the teenagers. You know, the people would rather be there than at some kind of house party where who knows what they're doing there, you know, with other people or alone. And that's just a place where you can just be safe and just have fun. When you plan the process, they feel very empowered. And I see a lot of empowerment happening. Youth that might not necessarily feel like they have any way to make a difference start to really get excited. It brings together many different organizations, individuals, community members, um, agencies that want to make change and want to provide a safe um, a safe place for kids to have fun in the evening, so there isn't a lot of activity to do. The most amazing thing about Holyoke Nights is that we don't have the resources to do Holyoke Nights. We have no funding, we have um, no space. So really it's just other folks stepping up to volunteer um, their space, their time, and their services. So the next step is really getting some financial backing and having folks really understand the, the, the importance of it. Well, my vision for um, Holy Nights is um, that it gets bigger and better because um, so far we have like a limited budget for it, and we also have we have to like work around it. So if we had more money, I feel like we can make it a lot better for more people could come. It's not for just our benefit, but it's for like the community benefit. If like everybody's here at this party, there's like less people out in the streets creating problems. So we hope that you feel um, inspired by what you saw. And we would like to take just a minute to recognize Rebecca and Amy. I see Amy in the back for the great work they do. And lastly, we just couldn't pass on this opportunity to, to get those of you who are in attendance today to join this movement. So we're going to be passing around um, some clipboards, a place where you can put down your name and email. And so if we join together as individuals, we can do a lot to support the Holyoke Knights. Thank you very much on behalf of our group. Thank you, thank you. And I also want to thank the Holyoke Youth Task Force again for partnering with our team.